And this should be inside the verse, postcards inside the verse with the bird being the word from somewhere. <laughs> Where is that coming from? <laughs> Science has lost it. <laughs> oh, Christ. You Welcome are... to Inside the Verse for September the 18th, 2016. Yeah, Dad, the auto DJ belly out, huh? Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, we are... Right. What? Why do I keep hearing that? Why, Why do you keep, keep hearing, hearing what? Hearing what? what? At present, Seriously, we are what are you talking about? Yeah, we don't hear anything. You just keep, like, starting and then stopping and going, like... <laughs> so what are you talking about? Greetings, Hellcat Leet. Right. Are we good? <laughs> this is we're, Inside we're the Verse. Mm -hmm. Episode over nine. Ten, because I've got another thumb there. So, we are joined by the illustrious, glorious auto DJ... The amazing Nitro Type Hat. Mm -hmm. And the majestic Silence. Ew. <laughs> because there wasn't too much going on, we thought we could uh, cross over postcards and inside and try and bring you some news as well as try and make you laugh this week. <laughs> Accessing human protocols. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. So what do we have on the news this week, Shiver? Well, we are only a few weeks away from CitizenCon. Things are gearing up for that. Everyone's yeah. going but me and Nitro. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yep. I hear the auto DJ is going to download his programming into a human form and possibly make an appearance. This is confirmed. What? That's so not true. <laughs> How are you going to pull that one off? I'm articulating splines when no one is looking. Nice. What do you think he does with all the human and spleens? Turn the left. Fog is means more human. It will work. Oh my resident code monkey horseburg. It's somebody who refers to themselves using a word that describes something that goes away when you say his name. I, I can't believe you're playing it when you have the auto as right yeah, yeah. I'm hoping if I get collection up enough, I can have the auto DJ have an argument with the auto DJ. That you know, might be pretty in cool. theory, that is possible. No, it isn't. It's Why wouldn't it be possible? It's very easy for me to have an argument with myself. I just have to place myself in multiple places at the same time. That's true. After all, I am an artificial intelligence. I can be in multiple places at the same time. I just need multiple systems. Turn left. There you go. <laughs> uh, so this week's ATV RTV coming up is going to be in Frankfurt. Does that mean we will finally get some 2.6 news, do you think? I hope so. I know I got excited when they were like, yeah, it's Frankfurt next week. My guess, Frankfurt. Well, that and maybe we'll hear a bit more about the procedural planets, which is always a plus. Mm -hmm. Procedural planets would definitely be interesting. I'm not too sure that we're going to hear too terribly much more about 2.6, though, as it hasn't really even hit the Evocati testing stage, or at mm -hmm. least release-wise. Not to mention, it might make a decent uh, rollout for CitizenCon, too. Hmm. At the very least, you can see probably trying to aim for everyone to be on the PTU for CitizenCon. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. Touch wood, of course. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think uh, the 2.6 with the... Oh, what did they call that video that came out in the sneak peek about uh, motion... The FPS. Vision stabilization. Yeah. Thank you oh, very much. Oh, yeah. That's right. Thoughts, I'm really looking forward to it. 
It um, felt, they didn't. I was going to say, it yeah. felt weird. Like, I don't know if it's just because I've slowly gotten used to what we've had, and I know what we've had is wrong, but it still feels weird. Is it wrong that I just want to make a bad joke about it? Do it. This is postcards at no, the moment. Go no, for it. Go for it. No, no. no. I just figured it was because it wasn't in a wheelchair. Yeah, you can do it. I put the mature warning up. It's fine. I did. I genuinely went through all the mature warnings and stuff for this week's. But does that mean I yes. can say balls? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of balls are we talking about? Uh, the spherical kind. Space of. balls. I'm sorry. What? Stata balls. Water? Stata balls. Uh, Why are your balls but- sadder? <laughs> He's a computer. Uh, yeah. At least that means he gets like six gigabits per second, right? I'm not worried about the type of interface we can use. Is it MasterMate compatible? Nice. <laughs> Sorry, Silence. You were going to say. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, but I was curious about the, or I, I don't know, like I, I saw the video and I was kind of. 50-50. I didn't see them actually use any of the cover system, which I thought was supposed to be part of what was coming in with 2.6 as well, isn't it? Yeah, I was actually surprised not to see any of that as well. Like they, part of the reason they, that they didn't actually display that, though, was because this was all about the visual stabilization. Uh, they didn't want to go into the cover system with that particular video because, well, they've already displayed it. And to that, they did show some basic parameters of the AIs that they're using to, you know, shoot at, which was kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Did you know the AI reacted as well to what was going on? Do you hear something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I heard that. Um, well, I guess I was surprised they didn't do any of the or show off the stabilization because that is part of the stabilization. Um, is how they're going to handle it when you're going in out of cover, leaning around cover, so on and so forth. I mean, that's actually where I imagine can cause the most drastic shifts, which is. One of the things that people have kind of been complaining about since day one with like the uh, the animations of getting in and out of ships and so on and so forth. So They do stuff, the current ones when you're getting in and out of um, the ships do suffer a bit from the Blair Witch project. Right. <laughs> like you're a fucking Thunderbirds puppet or something, you know. <laughs> so right, I put the mature warning up. <laughs> I get a thing. I'm never going to be on inside ever again. <laughs> In answer to uh, your question, Trivial Funk Suit, I have the auto DJ from the base radio where we are simulcasting this broadcast. Simulcast means at the same time. Well, no way. I never would have guessed that. Rear Admiral, you're so <laughs> knowledgeable. Right, Jesus, you What's should be the next? one telling me this. You're meant to be the engineer. I am. Here we go. I don't All know I do why is... I sound like I've got a cold. <laughs> if you do that, I'm going to start doing the slurping again. <laughs> that was actually quite amusing. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we better move Motor on. Oil. We better move on. Uh, so they <laughs> spoke with uh, the DevOps team this week in like the, the around the verse where you're going around. This. And they spoke a little bit about the patching system, how the current archiving system pack files round about two gig each, which is why if they change 10 megabytes worth of data in one pack file, you've got to download two gigabytes worth of pack files because the whole thing's tied into it. Um, is, they is are there, working on. D- does pack file have um, a, a wife? Like, you know, what? Mi- miss pack file? Wouldn't that be a sister? Wife would be Mrs. It's, no, well, unless it was Ms. Miss. Miss is single. Ms. is ambiguous, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ms. is ambiguous. Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's oh, yeah, dumb man! You're just shiz! We're teaching the world about the proper use of Miss, Ms. or... <laughs> oh, well, I tried to make a dumb Basically, Miss You can't Pac-Man go wrong joke. if you say Ms. <laughs> So, like, when the car is back from his gender operation, we will refer to him as Ms. Space Pope because it's, it's, it's the most respectable way. 
Really? Nakara, really? N- I thought... Be a generalist title? <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't imply the femininity that goes along with wearing a dress and being bearded at the same time. Mm, I love his beard. So Nakara's a dwarf? <laughs> See, you I, said Nakara, I, I and I thought you said, oh. yeah, I thought you said uh, the car, and you were like, the car is coming back from surgery, and I'm like, why'd the car have to go to surgery? I did hear the car first, too, until I really... But then I was like, Nicara. oh, that's right, Nakara, gotcha, got it, we're good. <laughs> car, uh, car, uh, got it. Yeah, ah, I see what you did there. Oh man! Like, how yeah. did we go from patching file size to Kara? Miss Pack. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and if you remember a fair nice. old while back, they were working on their own archive system. Yeah, uh, trying to ditch. I don't know if they would be ditching dot pack, obviously, but uh, recognizing something within the own file structure, so you literally only download what you need, rather than. Massive chunks. Right. That's, um, that's kind of the continuation of that, isn't it? Mm, exactly that. They're looking at trying to re- reduce the patch size by about 90%. Exactly. Which is a nice thing. I mean, who doesn't like not being able to, uh, or not having to patch gigs upon gigs for what seems like a relatively minor change? Most internet service providers would be very happy about this. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Maybe Time Warner Cable will uh, decide to stop being, you know. Oh, you're streaming. That's that's illegal. You guys heard about all that, right? Yeah. Uh, no. yeah. A lot of people were having issues where their ISP was using uh, was viewing the uh, patch files as torrents for illegal files and were stopping their downloads. Yep, and it was really funny because at the time um, there was a Time Warner Cable commercial coming up. And Time Warner Cable was actually one of the people that was doing it pretty badly. Um, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was well, just a kick. That's good news for those of people on a bandwidth cap, people with yes. like crappy internet speeds. Yeah, you pretty much so it. yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, the, you- the good thing about that is hopefully it's going to encourage more people to get a test client and get in there and submit some data. Exactly. Not to mention, what were you going to say? You know, not have to patch for five hours. Mm. What were you going to say, Jitters? Oh, I nothing. I, oh, you sorry. said uh, people with a, a really slow internet speed, and I was like, yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you mean. I get my internet through good old fashioned Victorian copper cabling. Can't beat it apart from everything else. <laughs> uh, Drake Herald nice reveal for Drake Herald this week oh yeah uh, very rugged it's like a Russian fallout kind of feel off it anyone else yeah I don't know I mean I yeah Russian I don't know about fallout but yeah I, I enjoyed the design although it's got the biggest engine to ship ratio so I enjoy mm. One question, I, or one concern I do have about that ship ratio is that even when it's in uh, Super Cruise, it's only moving at 950 meters a second. Doesn't the 350R, which has smaller engines and technically more mass, go faster than that? I think that yes. the engines provide better acceleration, not uh, not necessarily higher top speeds. Well, yeah, that we'll find out when they actually. Um, when they actually bring it out completely. Yeah, that's mm. true as well. That is likely to change with the expansion of the item system. Yeah, no, that too. No longer will we need to use cats for quantum fuel, but we still will. The question Why are you looking at me like that? We use cats for quantum fuel. That, would the Cat? 350R and the M50 be given that interceptor role then one, as one of the only things out there that could catch a herald. So is that a mechanical rules based uh, reason that they're capping the speed at 950? Okay, Maybe. It could be looking at ways that people could have actual high speed 
interceptor dogfights as well as the Hornet type, lower speed, rough and ready type things, maybe. Well, that and also, um, they might just keep it at a high speed because part of the whole problem with the Herald that they were talking about to begin with is it, you know, if you want to turn, you're turning around a planet, you're not turning on a dime. Um, and so, you know, frankly, just from that perspective, giving it a really large engine and a really crappy turn radius means, that, sure, that thing can run. But if you're smart about it, you're you know, picking a point in front of it to intercept it at. Mm-hmm. And by the time that it's still trying to get away, its engines are screwed and it can't turn. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like, ah, crap. And it's, it's more of a dragster no. than a race car. Yes, exactly. So theoretically, depending on how they want to play it out, I mean, it could work. I like uh, Jim the Instant Manager. Like, I plan on downloading myself into the Drake Herald, so if you want a stable PU connection, you've got to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think, generally, of the Herald Auto? Because, I mean, that is a, a computery type ship. You mean it's a ship with I'm a huge computer? Honestly, looking You're forward not auto. to it, uh, I'm curious about why they put the data on the outside of it, but that's more of a flavor slash realism, I guess, uh, issue. Beyond that, I am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the info run mechanics, though though they have stated that that's not going to come out for a good long while yet, simply as a matter of there's only one info runner ship. Counter to that, why can't you use any other ship for running information? Because these this day and age, Think of how small or how much space a hard drive actually takes up, and how much you can put on that hard drive, and how much that's going to increase in nine hundred years in the future. Um, I think exactly. I think the reason that they've got these things on the outside is because otherwise, how are you going to be able to transfer cell data if it's not a physical item? Yeah. And I suppose as well, if if you've been paid to say go spy on some planet for whatever, you go back and then you've you've got your surveillance tape as this thing. This is the international hand symbol for thing, and you just got to pull it out when you're docked there and give them that and say, there you go, that's it. That is the only copy, and you you know you know that is the secure only copy. It's not been stored in the Herald systems. It's on this physical drive, which is what you're giving over. That actually would make a lot of sense. Uh, would they in turn have to give you one of those back, or would you only have, you know, the eight of them on the ship before you have to go purchase more of them? Maybe yeah. they could be like that huge VHS cassette recorders and they just need the data tapes or whatever on the inside, like a piece of ribbon. Because that's That'd what be I picture really them using funny. in the 29th century. Yeah, I was going to say 900 years in the future, you just open one of the compartments on the side of the Herald, and it just, like, makes the old VHS, like, whirring noise because it's rewinding the tape, mm. and then it ejects it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking that you would just, that you would uh, buy, like, well, as we're joking about it, the, the new tapes. Um, but also, you, you mentioned earlier that why can't other ships be info runners, and they did mention that there would be the ability to do a similar task but that the Drake Herald was designed around specifically gathering and then tran- and then like transporting it uh, versus the others that like you would have to modify it to be able to do so. Um, like if I remember right, they said the Endeavor could be used to do that job. More than likely, um, even probably the Terrapin. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, the Terrapin, that was one of them. Terrapin, I'm positive definitely. they said the Terrapin. Um, so that's the like, whole point of the Terrapin. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's just kind of a difference of of approach. Um, so, like, you know, your your herald is meant to get in, grab the data like crazy, and then book it the fuck out of Dodge. Yay, I can say fuck because it's mature. Um, versus the, uh, the Terrapin, which, you know, flies in, gathers the information, and then takes a beating. It's like, hey, guys, I'm just going to, like, cruise out of the system. By yeah. all means, like, please try to beat the crap out of me. I'm just going to mm-hmm. soak it. That's cute. Um, and so it'll, it'll be interesting. Like, I'll, I'll be curious to see how they kind of, how, how sh- things adapt around the various systems they're going to go and play. Uh, back, 
briefly to the data storage thing, uh, Confuse mentioned in chat and a few others agreed, I think, uh, with why would you store your most important bread and butter pieces on the outside of your ship where it's not protected by armor, just shields? So that you can eject the most important part of your ship and fire it off to at some other location for easy pickup. It lets you fly by, drop the data, and keep going. That and that. it's great. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, come on. That actually have a was something speeds. that they've shown in the, uh, some of the concept art. Is that's why they actually have it on the external. I still think that they should have some form of protection over them, but I get why they don't, because then you have more moving parts that can potentially jam up when you're trying to eject the hard drive so that it can't be picked up. Uh, and being able to inject, eject individual ones that contain a specific data, say it's the third one on the left. Well, you need to eject the one on the left and then turn left. I love you, Arlo. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I knew that one was coming. Turn left. Wait, exactly. Wait, huh? Huh? What? That's what I'm Which saying. Which one was it? I don't even uh, think Shiver knows anymore. And I'm the one doing the sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> and You're something smart. that... <laughs> Rhubarb? Mashed potatoes. Yes. Watermelon. Uh, the, the, the music logic, something that I think Auto and Nitro especially will be... Uh, quite interested about is the music system how it's going to be dynamic changing upon what you're doing if it's if you're in combat it's going to be full on battle music Mm -hmm. if it's just ambient it's described as very ethereal yeah Um, they did say which caught my eye something was uh, the ambient track will change depending on what system you're in so Earth's background music will be different from Terra's I actually don't think I caught that that's pretty cool Yep. I hope that was said. That it is one thing that notes. I am looking forward to, simply because I want to know how it's going to change. What minor flavor are they going to adapt from the Terra system versus the Soul system? I'm sure that, you know, if you go out to the Tiber system, you're definitely going to have a much darker, much more grim atmospheric music compared to Earth or some other populated human control system. How is it going to change when you're out in Xeon space? That's something that's going to be interesting. I wonder well, if... Well, they were um, describing... I'm sorry. I was going to say... I wonder, no, you go, Jesus. You know, they, they say that uh, the Xeon are, are based on the... Um, uh, what's it called? The like, ancient Chinese empire, right? Um like that empirical uh, Asian form, I wonder if that's reflected in their music as well. I wonder if... Ooh, that could be... Yeah, that'd be cool. um, one of... Maybe I think it's like some guitars in there. I'm sorry, wait, uh, Otto? That would make sense. Yeah, it would. I was just like, because, I mean, I don't know, you could also look at it in the way that, oh, they're aliens that come up with their own language. It's just... That we kind of just based their structure on um, Asian empires, but it'd be cool if they kind of adopted that feel of music as well. Sure. I remember. But, I think it was an old ATV. They had one of the law writers saying about how he pictures the Banu listening to. I think it was the Banu would listen to something very baroque, uh-huh. um, whereas the Jean would listen to something very ordered. Yeah. I can't remember. Sense. It was a while ago. Anyway, sorry, silence. Yeah, that one's, that one's a bit of a stretch for me, too. I don't remember that one. Oh, um, well, the thing I was saying is that I think it'd be pretty cool if they did adopt the uh, the, the music as well from, like, an Asian uh, like an Asian standpoint, even if it was just the um, syntax. I, I don't even know how you would describe that. The the Just the, the overall feel. Yeah, because uh, I just Asian really want music. that, like, that, like, the, you know, the... The twangy t- guitar. Yeah, the twangy guitar. The, the, the keytar, I think it is. Is what it's called? Well, it depends really on what level or what day and age of cultural music you're looking at. Because if you are looking at ancient Asian, 
yes, you're going to hear some of that. But if you go to please no J-pop. Can you imagine? Can you imagine alien space turtles singing J-pop? Yes. I want that now. Most recent Michael Bay films. Touche. Touche. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the kind of. I'll be curious to see how they handle like the music and everything because that that is going to be interesting the different transitions between between it all um i actually missed that part too about the difference between terra and uh earth and so on and so forth just the difference in the music's there although i i did catch that section with the battle and hyping up the music and earth is going to be entirely j-pop terra is going to be (sighs) k-pop it might not be too bad i think i could get used to it Eventually, that is actually one of the things that I'm considering reaching out to CIG about is to find out what is a popular musical style in each individual system. Ooh. But I also have no idea if they've actually thought that far ahead, simply because you know that's a really minor detail that, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter this early into development. Mm-hmm. And no one ever would, listens to metal in these things. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they actually did start thinking that far ahead. Um, just because, I mean, the, remember when they were talking about, I don't know if you guys remember the, uh, the, the documents, how people, I'm trying to remember who they actually brought in to talk about it. But they were discussing like uh, someone that, that actually comes in, they, they get access to all these source documents. And just on different races, there'll be hundreds and hundreds of pages on uh, you know their history is where you know like how they how they developed um, like the direction they developed why they developed that way uh, the the way in which they talk and this was before they started doing the languages um, just the overall feel of it and with the depth that they put into it I'd be shocked if they didn't start trying to break things down like that on worlds um, where they're like well this one you know might have more of a feel of such and such and might have more of a music style like this and. Why not? Especially with the uh, the music system. Assuming they're they are doing the music system, like where they are changing between the different worlds. Mm-hmm. They, they've true. got to already have that in. Can I just ask when you're sitting there going, and that's about like the music system? Are you like trying to flip everyone off? <laughs> no, but I'm sorry, I, I guess I didn't realize no, it. I don't have any hands. <laughs> it does kind of look like it because I went like this, something like that. And it, yeah, nice. Yay, perspectives. Uh, and then I, that, my that hands was, a lot. I gesture like crazy. Sorry. Nothing like, nothing like Chris I and I. Just I my eyebrows. Like Chris and I. We, we're like Stan Dude, off man. Monkey Island. <laughs> um, and that was pretty much the uh, big bits and bobs that came off ATV. You know, you know we can see you. Uh-huh. That, that does that isn't going to work. You we can see you doing the yeah, eyebrow thing. I, I see you smiling, so this actually works. Uh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at Auto. He has no eyebrows. You Correct. know that. Seems I don't like see re- any eyebrows. My avatar that I'm yeah. currently building, however, does. Mm. Is it? It's not you a know, giant blue avatar, is it? No. Oh, I would rather face. die. Oh. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just now imagining like auto DJ coming on like the next time and putting like giant blocks for like eyebrows that move around as he's like talking. <laughs> All these squares make a circle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can we just have like a Max Headroom thing avatar for him? That, that'd be pretty Wouldn't cool. That'd be good. Also, really you get points for the reference there. Thank you. That's very... I'm impressed. Uh, then, reverse of verse, later in the week, uh, Josh Coons, 3D artist, was on there. Uh, they they did have a Mike Jones, IT director. Most of the questions they asked him were things like, how many people on the team? Nine. Spread across various studios and how they work together through email and things. He feels like they're all in the same office and looking, even I'm doing the hands thing. 
then the patch size being a big challenge and how it's more of a pride thing than anything. And then we got to the even more interesting things of Josh Coons, the 3D artist. And if, in case you don't know, he is the guy who worked with Chris Smith on the new Constellation and did the work on the Drake Herald all by himself. What do you guys think? He says, you know, he's, he seems to be, ah! Oh! <laughs> he seems to have this uh, style of great How do you detail. Know somebody is good with the English language. They are able to describe Dolly Parton without the use of their hands. <laughs> she sings country and western. She's, Doesn't she? Well, yeah, she does. I use my hands. <laughs> so, she's, yeah. Chris, she's got big no, not Chris Smith. hands. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm good. I was done. You, I nothing else you want to get off your chest? No. no. You don't want to keep us abreast of anything else? No. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought you bought some Water melons. Here. Did, did you? Cantaloupe? I'm jitters. <laughs> no, I'm jitters. It says so right there. <laughs> It's, where, where is it at? It That's says, not so, on my screen. It says Nitro Typat. Who's he? A, it's, He's it's inventor like, uh, of the Typat. You know, Typat. It's, it's like right. It's like right down, like there. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's on on my screen. It's, it's like, like it says it right there. There, are my fingers right underneath it. Oh yeah. No, it's in mid air. But yet again, I have no hands. He's not a clock. He's probably yeah. got that function built in though. <laughs> It's a digital clock. Moving on, what was the question? Yes, Josh Coons worked on the Drake Herald himself. What do we think of uh, his style, I should call it, really? He seems to have quite a nice eye for detail on panelling and armours and things mm-hmm. like that. And, uh, yeah, the first ship he worked on, what do you think going forward? Do you, would you like to see more work of his own, or would you like to see him working, teamed up with someone? Um Bit of both. Uh, I think he did fantastic with the Connie for the parts that he did. Uh, And I am glad that he was willing to take the risk of adding the large external pipes on the back end of the Herald. Uh, That that makes it actually feel like a Drake ship. We were pointing at you in agreement. (laughs) So... (laughs) Everyone is quite happy with the way the Drake looks. You think yeah. uh, that that is uh, that that is how you picture Drake ships to look. Yeah, like when they showed the Herald, it was like there's no other way that I could picture that ship looking. That like it was a lot more detailed than it was before. Because I remember when the concept art came out, it was like it looks kind of plain. It looks kind of uh, you know not really that detailed. It kind of just looks. They've got the Drake shape, but they don't really have the Drake detailing to it. And then this came out, and I was like, "Yep, that's a Drake ship. It's militaristic looking. It's I, it's it's. I don't want to use the word Spartan because you know that's you know, but it's yeah, it's, it lasts you know a lot longer than an hour. <laughs> so technically, Spartan would be true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, and you say you're not witty. How? You know, I've updated my wit protocols. You can thank our resident code monkey horsebird for that. Silence. Yes. Seven eight nine. Seven eight nine. <laughs> <laughs> you loved that on the last kid, didn't you? I did. I, I didn't think anyone was going to beat that. That was it. <laughs> So there is oh. one thing, though, that I would have liked to have seen them do something. And yes. the Herald does have wings on the side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> something that stuck with me as a signature of a Drake ship uh, from the Cutlass is having those small vertical wings on at the end mm. of wingtips. Yeah. I'd like if they were to do something like that. Uh, oh, that's- and that, to me, is... That would make a perfect Drake signature from even just a silhouette standpoint. You've got two just vertical 
endpoints for the wingtips. You can see that to some extent in the Caterpillar as well uh, with the command module. If they were to employ that, that would be, you know, yes, it's completely useless fluff, but it that to me says Drake. It's the useless fluff that we deserve, though. Um, yes. You know, when it comes to my my kind of standpoint, I, like I, I always think it looked Drake as well. Um, although actually, someone someone pointed it out, which is one of the things I was a little bit disappointed with the direction they took it, is that they removed the the asymmetrical nature of the Herald. I I really kind of dug that asymmetry that they were doing with the with the Drake ships. Yeah, the fact that um, they had just like all. one giant wing and then like a little radar dish rather than just two ADP wings. Yeah. I mean, like, frankly, I, I do like the sunfish wings and all, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a little funny at times, but yeah, no, I actually really dig the way it looks. And, and to me, it does look very Drake, although not, not because it looks, uh, as you so put it, Spartan. Um, but I actually think that it almost looks, um, well, a little tacked together in a way. Um, like combined they just took with two like engines the, and put a ship on it, it kind of like the that's that's one of the things that always like struck the me. M50? With this. The M fifty yeah, actually looks like it was designed quite. that way, though. the yeah. The Herald feels very much the like, Herald and Drake ships in general. Yeah, yeah they it exactly. was just like here's a ship. Oh, let's put the biggest engines we possibly can on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that not kind of the Drake philosophy of right? What do we need to build a spaceship? Engines, life support. Weapons. Oh shit! We forgot the hull. We'll stick that on. Optional. Yeah, After all, yeah. Dragonfly has no life support system. Yeah, true. that's true. And not to mention, they don't even put ejection seats, even on their fighters. Mm-hmm. They said that like you got to pop that canopy and hop on out. Um, oh, I can't wait for the buccaneer. Oh. Yeah, I, I want to make the pirate joke, but I, I'm going to hold off this time. This is this about off. the corn and how it's on yes. sale? Yeah, for a for buccaneer. buccaneer. So, um, <laughs> but I, I dig that that sort of um, put together and like the well, it's it's not just that that I find is very typical with Drake, but the very helicopter aesthetic that they love using for the Drake ships, mm-hmm. and I love that. I absolutely love that sort of that um, sort of approach to the cockpit and the very sort of box ish to it. Um, just love it. I'm just picturing putting a, a couple of propellers on top of the Herald. I wonder if uh, the Drakes will be the equivalent of the Minmatar ships from EVE Online. Minmatar ships were like, uh, what was it? the joke was I've spent oh, about yeah. an hour trying to salvage this wreck. And then I suddenly got this PM from the pilot who said, leave my Minmatar ship alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, actually. So I, uh, I wonder if the Drake will, ha- uh, Drake line will have that sort of a reputation of uh, very salvagey put together, but mm-hmm. hmm. what, what maybe was it? What? I was going to say that uh, there was somebody on uh, the subreddit one time that was talking about hoping that eventually they could maybe make ugly ships, uh, which was a, a Star Wars thing where it was people took parts from every different ship and just built a ship out of it. So it was like an X-Wing with TIE Fighter wings um, and, like, a, a Y-Wing engine strapped on the back and stuff like that. And, like, I think somebody made one out of Star Citizen parts, like, made a 3D model of one. And it was, like, a Hornet with uh, Cutlass engines and stuff like that. And I, I, I don't know. I, I hope that... I doubt that that'll eventually happen because then everybody will just have a thrown-together ship. But I want that to be a thing. <laughs> No, I know what you mean. That that level of modularity. But one thing you have to keep in mind with that is with the system that they're using to make everything bespoke, they're Mm -hmm. spending between $35,000 and $100,000 per ship in development Mm -hmm. costs. So making an ugly ship, yes, it would definitely make the verse that much more immersive and that much more real. It's still a cost benefit. I'm still really, really hoping that they give in to Disco Lando's request of making a space jalopy because, again, that will make the verse that much more real. I would love a Hugo in space. Mm. Nice. 
I can picture maybe um, like down the road when the full PU is out, maybe finding a derelict ship and the ship is just throwing together pieces and parts. Um, that might be interesting to be like, oh yeah, well, this person had a, a a Mustang with a couple of Cutlass engines strapped onto the back and they wrecked into the side of this asteroid and now going to pick up their cargo. Uh, but I don't see any of us being able to do it. Um, other than you know, the basics of, um, you know, that ship has a T4 engine in it and it fits the same socket as the T4 engine on my ship. So I'm just going to swap their engines and it might look slightly different, but like not really that much. So Hellcat Leet has just linked the Cutlomancer, which ah. is a very handsome ship. Has to be said, that looks pretty cool and quite aggressive. Huh. What's funny is, like, it's not even... They didn't even take pieces of the ship. In between yeah, the other. They literally just put together. one inside of the other. And whatever uh -huh. was sticking out is, what's, is what you see. That kind of looks like it, yeah. Just stuck oh, it together with some duct tape. God. Oh, so speaking of ugly ships... <laughs> Uh, right, we'll quickly move along. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, this was the exciting bit. That, uh, I think it was still Josh Coons that said it. He is now working on the Cutlass Black, so that's mm. entering the rework, which must mean the Drake style guide is either complete or it's such a stage now that that Drake's going to look special. I, I think better, with better. them putting the cut, uh, not the Cutlass, the... Uh Caterpillar together. I think they have the style guide pretty much flushed out. So mm. the caterpillar was determined to be the source of the style guide for Drake, not the Cutlass. It was the caterpillar. Uh, right. I mean, uh, that would make sense being a much larger ship. Please get rid of yeah. the pregnant stomach on the Cutlass. Please. I'm just more interested in moving the bed away from the loo. Nice. <laughs> well, you don't want to wake up with the captain sitting next to your head. No, I don't. I mean, I've heard of the captain's log. Don't be late That's for your shift. Yeah. Don't be late for your shift. Just wake that. him up while he's sitting on the toilet, dude. Dude, you've got like another hour. Pass me the toilet paper. Yeah, pass me. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the other end of your bed. <laughs> I was thinking of moving it to the cabin. It's uh, you know across from me, but eh, <laughs> it just fit better at the bottom. That means I'd have to hold the pants and wobble and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Hornet. He's working on the Hornet. So presumably yeah, the, that would oh, be that the me, Mark One, Mark, the, the whatever. New, oh. mm. uh, the new, well, he might not be. Uh, I thought he was using the Hornet as a comparison point of what amount of work he's going to be doing, uh, where the Hornet was redone by a single artist, forgive me for forgetting their name, uh, it's not cached in my data systems. Uh, we'll call him he's Dave. He's going to be the only one hey, to do the rework of the Hornet. H-A-L-9-0-0-0. Dave. Nice. He's not wrong. <laughs> but it doesn't fit in the crossword puzzle. Uh -uh. It does not. And the constellation Phoenix. Ooh, yeah. I am muchly looking forward to that, as I have one tucked away at the bottom of our broadcasting station. <laughs> I've ju I've been waiting for the Phoenix myself for a while. That that, that hot tub. Got to have the hot tub. Mm -hmm. Can I come over? Do you actually have tipping? one? Yeah. <laughs> I, it, I so, the any of those you want to talk about? Hornet, Cut, Constellation, Phoenix. Um, I'm excited the to Phoenix. see the. Well, I mean, I don't know. I I love the the constellation, and I prefer honestly the Aquila because I love that rounded um, viewing deck. But I don't know. I you just like more, things. I don't know. The Constellation's always been a weird point for me because it's like, I love it because it's a big ship and it's like, it's like a, the, not the Enterprise because the Enterprise is freaking huge. 
<laughs> but it's like the the Millennium Falcon, right? That's no, that's more of a freelancer. No, it's a the ship. Millennium Falcon is actually what the constellation has been compared against, and that really? was from day one. Chris Roberts said the constellation is essentially the Millennium Falcon of the Star Citizen universe. That's fair enough. One of the things that they did mention, though, is with the breakout of the Constellation's nose system, you will be able to swap out the rounded nose from the regular Constellations or the Phoenix with the Aquila. Uh, I am curious how they're going to be handling that as far as what it will come with for turret and or possibly storage system on the Constell or on the Phoenix, uh, because when they were displaying that, it was showing the... Uh, turrets as part of that breakout and mm. for where for the phoenix they are planning on having the turret system where one of the storage is but there was some argument with that saying that well you promised us the phoenix is to have two turrets and you've only got one of them in the hangar what's going on oh yeah sorry oversight we'll fix it later yeah I, i'd kind of enjoy if if the constellations had more of a variety between the variants because it's like the taurus is kind of shorter and it's got more cargo space the Aquila has the sensors replacing one of the turrets and a rounded cockpit, and the Phoenix has a hot tub. And it's... I don't it also know, has a point defense system for... Yeah, it, so I, I think nah, it'd be a little bit the, cooler. Forget the system, it's just about the hot tub. Yeah. I, I think it'd be a bit cooler if they had more visual differences uh, from each other. I have a problem with the Taurus. What's the problem with the Taurus? It's bullshit. It was not a very good car. Oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, a couple of people have made some very good points about the Connies. Uh, Nolrick said, with what was said about the hot tub, it's supposed to be retractable from the floor after the rework, like the table in the Andromeda. In fact, the table, not just in the Andromeda. That's across all of them. I don't know if the Taurus has got one, but... Uh, will, the and tub, will the hot tub also double as a time machine? <laughs> no. And Hayes no, underscore zero seven. And you should no. feel bad. I'll leave. <laughs> uh, let's just call Hayes 07. Uh, he said uh, the constellations can upgrade to the Aquila cockpit. And it's, yeah, the you, it's mo modu modularity allows you to have a different neck, a different bridge from mm -hmm. all the variety variants. Yeah, I think I talked about that last week where I was like, I know they said that with the variants of the constellation that they might do that in the future, but I hadn't heard anything about it recently. So that's cool that everybody's right, like, yeah. As far as I know, and there's no technical reason that I can think of offhand where you wouldn't be able to put the modules across each other because they have got to uh, completely rework or destroy the ship to make it. Uh, compatible with other different modules, haven't they? It's like like a jigsaw piece, I suppose. If everything's got the universal socket for that particular ship, you can vary whatever. You know, it else has a universal socket. What? Go Master on, Mate? Master Mate. <laughs> I don't know about this Master Mate. Please inform me more. Well, you can find it uh, at uh, at the base sc. For about six dollars, uh, sixty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. I thought it was local hardware stores. Ah, uh, too, but we have like we have male and female versions available. We have a brand deal, so it's like I mean, there, there's Mastermate Duo for you and a friend, a very awkward friend. Don't forget the Euromate. The Don't Euromate is a the traveling companion mm -hmm. <laughs> for those long journeys when you just need to go. One thing that I am really hoping for with uh, the Constellation Phoenix rework, though, is I would like them to do multiple interiors because it is a luxury ship. And having one standardized luxury thing, no, it's luxury. You should be able to choose between, you know, three or four different interiors entirely. That would be pretty awesome. It would be costly because, again... It, they have to pay to have the interior redone, but it would also quell arguments of uh, this layout is really dumb. Well, if you think it's really dumb, use one of the other layouts. Mm. Well, I'm almost wondering if, uh, I mean, totally theory crafting, of course. If they're going to, 
use something similar to what they're kind of doing with the Caterpillar um, and expanding that to cover more ships. Um, or be- the Starliner Genesis. I mean, that's actually another ship that actually will be perfectly in line with this as they were talking about the Starliner Genesis having different like plug and play components to the ship. Um, where it'd be like, oh, I want the um, you know the the high class, you know, the the upper class, whatever seating, first class seating to be over here, but then I want the you know other one to be over there, and blah blah blah. Or like, oh, I actually want to put like lockers in there because I'm going to use this as troop transports. Um, and so maybe they're going to do something similar for um, a lot of your bigger ships, where it'll be like, well, let's let's like move this back over here, and so long as it fits within the same area, then da da. Just to be able to change that veneer wood paneling finish to something would be nice because like a nice I, carbon fiber. Yeah, something. Yeah. I mean, it's all well and good having bits of wood on your spaceship, but like, I'm pretty sick to death of seeing wood everywhere in space. Masturbate. <laughs> yeah, chrome would be nice. Nice mm. little chrome division. I kind of actually like the carbon fiber idea. I'm a sucker yeah, for carbon like fiber, it. though. Same here. I, I think carbon fiber's got a nice look for it, uh, to it, assuming it's done right. Men, carbon fiber. <laughs> Luxury. <Nice>. Plastic. <laughs> well, you know, hey, carbon fiber. I, I would love a carbon fiber Shania, too. Hell yeah. But of course, like those a carbon fiber gonna- guitar. Yeah, right? It'll just cost you a freaking arm and a leg. Mm-hmm. And then I won't be able to play because I'll only have one I arm. I don't have any. Does that mean I get it for free? No, I think that means you have to actually get some and then trade it in. Don't tell someone that. else's. Don't tell that. Oh. Don't tell that. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen I Rico? Where's Rico at? You need your legs. I, I actually know <laughs> where you can get two spare legs, yeah. <laughs> Do you know anyone who's not using them, Jitters? <laughs> Not that I can think of. Uh, uh, we're going to have to ramp these things up. And to some mighty Smurf, we're home. You sure we should that's going like, to freak, gonna freak him out. The next gag. Uh, we'll quickly just say that the new jump point is up on robertspaceindustries.com. And that's it. It is full of so, interesting information about the caravan. Oh, yes. I want to read it. And, uh, oh, what was the name of that darn system? Why did I censor myself there? Bollocks. I don't know. What was the name of that system? Uh, there was a, one of the systems they taught, Gizomo. Was it Gizomo? Something like that, where it's got Gizomo. the Terrapin. Ah, bless you. And it's got the Terrapin just there in this base background. In case you're wondering, Sarah McCullough did that, and she was here two weeks ago. We we uh, have the audio up on the main site. Yeah, uh, Otto, are you are you getting a virus? Not at present. Oh, Do you, okay. you sure you don't want us to run a spy bot S and D check? Oh yeah. Should I run yes. Norton Security? No. <laughs> God, don't put another virus on there. Please no. <laughs> right, However, we are... I do request that you stop downloading pornography onto my systems. Sorry. <laughs> we are open to questions now. If you have any questions, either if you're in the base radio chat or if you are indeed in our own Twitch chat, please preface them with the word question in, in brackets. brackets so that we might be able to see your question through this absolute jungle of text that you keep all sending and spamming us with. Oh, I know. It's just it's just a... But yeah, I just so any... Any questions for the auto DJ, Jitters, Carl, why he can't read, about anything in particular, <laughs> it's fine. Where, where do the silicon wafers go? You know, that really makes me wonder, how do I read those notes? <laughs> 789. <laughs> <laughs> I really had too much fun with that one. Uh, oh. In case you don't know what they're referring to. I have just received an urgent message for you from the local bar establishment. You forgot yeah. your wheelchair. Oh. It keeps happening. <laughs> you should become more attached to that thing. 
Yeah, just but, start wearing my seatbelt. We got a question! <gasps> what? Oh, it's for good old reliable Jim. Uh, question. Jim. For Citizen Con, we know that we will see Phase 2 of Procedural Generated Planets and Squadron 42 assumption, but what else do you guys think we will see? A massive delay at the start. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that would be the, uh, the running joke, right? I, I've said it every time, and every time I've been right. <laughs> you know, if you're not right this time, I'm going to make you eat those words. All right. Then. No, we're it's we're just gonna Can't we're just words. gonna spout the words at you because you'll be there and we'll be harping on you the entire time. So. That's, That's true. true. Live on both island and, and the base. So I'll be like, and Shiver was wrong. Yeah, just deadpan <laughs> over the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, so I imagine there will be that. Um, otherwise, I mean, honestly, I'm. I'm not even sure if I want to guess because there's there's a lot of possibilities as far as what we might be seeing. It's going to be interesting. Just not for sure. I, I I, I'm sorry. I just saw Doom's Insurance question. That was good. There are going to be pretty much exactly what's going to be put on display. Uh, we may see an extension of some of the quest systems, some of the interaction system that you have between uh, NPCs. We may well see uh, more of the Idris, and we'll probably <laughs> see some combat in the new uh, F seven A Hornet. Mm. We might see um, oh, a dog. God. Yeah, it's my dog. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> my door is not magic. A flat cat. My dog. Uh, my door is not magic like realms. My door just opens because my dog pushes open. Um. What was I going to say? So what do you think we'll see? Oh, the uh, shopping and selling uh, interface. The, um, the new shopping and selling interface that they keep talking about that they're working on. Oh, yeah, with the oh. kiosk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, thank you, Norrick. <laughs> um, we will take a quick one from Lysergic12. I wonder if he's related to Acid Zenith. I'm late. Who is Auto DJ? So, Auto DJ, meet late. Hi, late. Pleasure to meet you. I'm I'm the Auto DJ 9001, the automated system used on the bass radio for broadcasting music. You can find us on thebass.sc, anytime on the spectrum. We're live 24 7. And in case you don't know, the bass, I, I, yeah, oh, crumbs. Every single one of us are in some way, shape, or form. In. I did. <laughs> Wait, did he say oh crumbs? He did. That's even he better. He totally did. He said oh crumbs. <laughs> Shiver, when are you going to learn to just say fuck it? Seriously. I don't fucking know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, floppy disks. <laughs> <sighs> oh, right. peanut butter so, crumble. <laughs> in case you don't know, in some way, shape, or form, every single one of us is involved in the base, uh, as well as I and N. We, like, uh, well, I, I think I'm currently speaking with my I and N hat on. We really appreciate and enjoy the close tie we have with the base.sc, but, you know, it's like, two different organizations that just support each other and have good friends in each. I really enjoy uh, the they are affiliates. I really yes. like the fact that I've been kind of just interjecting myself in more INN stuff as we go along. <laughs> the name of your INN tape? Yeah. Interje interjection? <laughs> interjection. Uh, question. Why can't Jitters touch type from next? I keep telling him it's because time zones. Gonna ask me that Fair question enough. every time I'm on. Yep. <laughs> uh, Doom Centurion asks in a fantastic way. Bracket, yeah, question, close bracket. Uh, anyone watch the Wing Commander 2 stream? I feel bad for those guys. They were dead at the end of the night. Though Ben pulled it out at the end. 
He did what at the end? Is that allowed on Twitch? I guess it is. I don't know. Oh, I'm glad I, he's feeling better. I, I watched yeah, the guy take a shit live on Twitch one time. I'm sorry about that. What's funny is it was dupe sums. Pornography deleted. <laughs> <laughs> That's Don't. all right. Um, so, yeah, did anyone watch the Wing Commander 2 stream? No. No. No, I, like I didn't. Yesterday. I didn't hear about it. I, I I didn't because I still have not played Wing Commander Two. That is the one I have not played, and I have it oh, ready to what? go. Yeah, yeah. That two is was the first. Uh, Wing Commander Two is actually my first computer things. game. I I don't think my uh, my attention I, span would have been able to last that long to be able to watch that stream. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Your first computer game was Wing Commander Two. Yeah. You were a late bloomer, sir. Yes, I was. Wow. Yeah, I was actually uh, like I'll never forget it. I like I was um, at the at the mall with my dad actually, and we walked into like a computer game store because he actually was was enjoying they the had computer them in those days. The they did. Um, and I saw this box, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" And I looked at it, and he said, "Wing Commander 2, and I was like, "This looks awesome!" And I was like, "I want this one." And he's like, "Okay." Um, <laughs> and look where you are that's, now. That's how I actually uh, ended up getting you know, Wing Commander 2 and then played Wing Commander 3 and 4 and then back to 1 and Kilrothi Saga and went all crazy because I love the crap out of Wing Commander and all that good stuff. And that's how I ended up here because then when I heard Chris Roberts was making a game, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Chris Roberts, Chris Roberts, Wing Commander guy? Um, I jumped on board the center. <laughs> And that's my yeah. gaming experience in a nutshell. Our holiday made me chuckle just then with Shiver, you've had 25 years. This is true. <laughs> I don't... Did Wing Commander 2 ever come out on the Amiga? I can't imagine the Amiga being able to run Wing Commander 2. It could barely no, run Wing Commander 1. I don't think it did come out on the Amiga. I mean, it, I it, had, it had 8-bit things that moved... Yeah. Don't know if the Amiga could handle that. I love that Amiga. It's very impressive. I'll do some show in hopes for a freelancer stream. That would be quite interesting. Uh, any it. questions, please chuck them in. Otherwise, we're just going to have an auto tell one of his jokes, and I'm not you sure you want, want that. that. No, no, we don't. He only knows two. <laughs> <laughs> and we heard one. No one's got any questions for us. What? If, all right then. Auto. Don't 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 do the eye joke. Tell us the other joke, or was that worse? So many many years ago, back in the approximately 1940s to 1950s era, oh, the eye joke. when air travel was a new thing, there was you were able to actually smoke on aircraft, as well as bring your pets. Well, one day, a man bring, starts smoking a cigar on his airplane, and a woman comes on board with a rather loud and obnoxious parrot. What do you think of a potential F-8 sale, NYXT asks? I think you're going to have to work on the punchlines, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. See, look at that. That's how bad, that's how much they don't want to hear these jokes. Next has pointed out uh, by Auto DJ, what do you think of the F8 potential sale? Um, they weren't going to sell case it. You don't, in case you don't know, Ben went on Ben's Day Week Just Gone with uh, Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo and did say that they are considering, if not probably going to be putting the F8 on sale. Really? Well, it's at, with the specifics that the role has changed. What? I am being very hopeful that by putting it on sale, they mean it will be something that you can acquire in the verse because my wallet can't handle another ship. <laughs> Especially when that big, it's probably going to be around Super Hornet to Terrapin price range. You know, Easily. that could actually be what uh, we see at CitizenCon. Rather than the release of the Polaris, we could see the F-8 going on sale in limited quantities. Maybe. But, wait, they're changing the role? That's what I it said. That's what, that's what the man said. 
Is I'll that be. all he said? That's interesting. Yeah. Oh. That's all I that's all I saw on the well, thread summary. I, I didn't actually watch You know thing. that those kind of make sense if you think about it because time. I mean they're they're talking about the F7 uh the the Hornet doing the the revamp on that and I mean frankly the F8 was supposed to kind of replace or you know be the the new space superiority. I don't know um, why they don't have done with it and just changed the name from F8 to F5. If you want, that's what it'll be like. Because if it goes that would on sale. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to say, is it because they're refreshing it? <sighs> I'm leaving for real this time. <laughs> I hope you press record this time. Well, uh, no, I <laughs> I'm not sure that anyone would want this to go on the YouTube anyway. Yeah. Um, question from Confused. You ever heard of Confused. No. Oh, no, he must be he is a lot, very confused. Sounds familiar. Uh, did anyone check the ship matrix lately? Seems the freelancer is in redesign yet again. Is constantly reiterating on ships a good idea at this point of development? Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair. They could be referring to the uh, variants rather than the actual freelancer. Yeah. Also, I mean, redesign. It doesn't necessarily mean all right. Here's our completed ship. Let's bin it and start again from scratch. It's probably yeah. more like this compartment here isn't big enough for the shield now that item system 2.0 is ready, mm -hmm. so we need to increase that. So I would say, yes, it is a good idea at this development. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use the ship. But I do get the point well, of, you know, I, I, I think the point, the, the, I think Confuse is basically trying to make the point of ships are constantly going back into work uh, is this a good idea at this late stage? Yes, because more systems are coming online and it's relatively speaking minor changes because the hard bits are what what we've spent the last few years getting to, which is building up the foundation so it can be as easy as drag, drop, stretch out, enlarge, shrink. But enough about my laundry list. Uh, Lysergic, 12, question, do we still expect Star Marine by CitizenCon? Was anyone ex actually expected ex expect Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could see it. I, I think somebody pointed out somewhere, I can't remember where, that it's, I think the the month has already gone by that 2.5 has been out. I think it's already been a month. Yeah. So really? um, their, their whole try and push out a new patch every month thing which I I don't want to be like why aren't they doing it? But it's it's like you know it's that kind of milestone is kind of there to help push them a little bit now. So we could expect it soon. And considering we're you know less than a month away, I it's not out of the question. Yeah, actually, especially considering they just showed off the uh, the stabilization. I mean, I think that they yeah. might be using that as a lead and like that that for all we know could be part of the big reveal at citizen mm -hmm. is the, the 2.6 and who knows maybe they've incorporated something else in there that's going to make us all just be like oh my god no ah! and like foam at the mouth fall over you know now with the stabilization everyone thing, unseen um did uh was it just me or did it the, the aiming seem a lot easier like not not actually aiming but like hitting what you're aiming at seemed a lot easier Oh yeah, and actually, you know, um, speaking kind of of the the stabilization too with the um, aiming. Actually, I'm curious how they're going to handle it with like the the Oculus Rift and everything because it looked like it was very centered. Huh. Like, I wonder if it's going to show up like in both eyes and make it kind of do that, or I, I think don't that know. Just... Mean like with, huh? with the way that the uh, I, I, hang on, I, I I what do you what do you mean? What center? I'm lost. Well, when they showed the the gun pull up, like the the sight was right in the center. Um, if you're actually like using a firearm and lining up, it's it's usually just one eye. Um, so with the mm -hmm. two eyes, I mm -hmm. imagine that it would cause like a bit of a like disconnect. Yeah, because you'd be holding the gun um, like this. Uh huh. I'm sorry, like like this. That's a very. That is actually a very good point. Because he, he, I predict that it will end up showing in both eyes simply because mm. of the way the Oculus functions. 
They can't just suddenly switch the one eye off just because you're going like that. That's uh, well, it wouldn't switch one eye off. It would just be like one <laughs> eye is looking down the sight while the other one's kind of just looking at the side of the gun. Yeah, like I, I'm almost wondering if maybe they'll um, do like some sort of expanding screen or, or something. Like I wonder if they're going to do some sort of trick to make the the aim actually shift over so it's more. I mean, with, towards the right, uh, it is on what's, the character. What's that new feature that Nvidia implemented? The one where. Um, VR is easier. The the one that like instead of um the pre rendered frame things or no, it's it's the one where it might not even be what I'm thinking about. No, because the one I'm thinking about like actually helps with the fisheye effect. Doing doing that's more. Ansel. Ansel, yeah. No, that wouldn't. But that's not one anything. One yeah, that's also not anything to do with VR. Problem. Ansel's a screenshot thing that takes a screenshot and. 3D. Well, there was also that one that um, that instead of taking uh, the like rendering it from one point of view and then trying to split it into VR, it was actually rendering two exact different frame uh, you know, point of views. And I wonder if that would help um, in any way. Well, wouldn't you still have that issue of when you're bring you you bring a gun up to your face to aim? You mm-hmm. by instinct close one eye anyway. True, and so it's, not necessarily. You can aren't you going to be a bit uh, confused with the shot if you are in VR? You've got this thing up, and yet it's simulated well, I, one eye close, but both eyes open. I know, I know, I'm not confused. Um, He's in the audience. Yeah, well, actually, personally, I I never actually shoot with both eyes or with one eye closed. Um, um, the only with time that I might do that. <laughs> The one time I might do that is with, with like a, a scope of I'm shooting like a so longer you keep range. So both eyes open may... when you shoot. Yeah, generally. Do you speaking, leave the lights on as well? Does she mind? Anyway, so back on your demonstration of how he shoots. Potential for exactly. balance issues because if you are letting somebody with a peripheral be able to see very clearly with one eye and have the advantage of the scope with the other eye. You now have given somebody who is paid more an unfair advantage compared to somebody who is using a uh, regular monitor display. It's not wrong. Would I not see more than the person who's in VR because I have a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, though? Depending on how they handle it, yeah. Not yeah, that's kind of a And to be honest, I mean, just because they see the aimer better with you know using one eye or whatever doesn't automatically mean that they'll be better because they still got to physically move to be able to shoot, like aim and shoot, whereas on mouse and keyboard, on the monitor, you just move the mouse, click, now you're dead. So Yeah. Well, that, I mean, I frankly, do see what you're saying. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, but, you know, you have people that actually do, like, a wraparound monitor and get the huge... You know, aspect ratio uh, on something that's like you know, five, six monitors. I mean, they technically, by that standpoint, have an unfair advantage too, just by spending the more money on it. All I mean, right, I, we I better move on because we, we are well away from the question now. This and is there true. Are other this questions true. there. Sorry. So, triangularity asked question. ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, triangularity. What ship would you like to use for a space race? I assume that's space. Space. What kind of space race? An Argo. A race in space. But not with lace. Auto, it will leave wanna, no trace. I want to do an Argo race with you. I want to soup up my Argo and race it with you. I want to see an Argo race. Wait, is that cheating? I, like because it. you're a computer. I, I actually, you know, I I'll, I think it'd be kind of cool if they did like an Argo race around a space station. <laughs> like abuse, like essentially abuse the fact that the Argo is a bit slower. Solely mm-hmm. for the purposes of, hey, guess what? Now you got to go through tighter areas. Yeah, um, I would do that. <laughs> I would do that. That sounds fun. It does sound fun, right? In this context, a spec race is a race involving a single ship, all with the same specifications. Basically, ah. if even if the ship is not stock, your everyone has the exact same tuned configuration of that particular ship. Yep. This pits pilot skill rather than saying you've got an advantage in your ship. Mm-hmm. Well, in that case, hell yeah. They, go with like an Argo around a station. If you've heard of uh, electric F1 racing, um, it, they do the same thing. They uh, they have uh, F1 racing where the cars are all electric and they're all exactly the same spec. They're all the same car. 
It's all up to the, the driver. We have that over here, but we call it scale electrics. You might call it slot car racing. I don't know. Uh, oh. There's like one person in England who's watching us who had a little bit of a chuckle over that. <laughs> Worth it. Our holiday, 17. Question. When the tally wins you? the bomber vote, yes. Will it be on sale? Uh, well, sorry, sorry what? what? Yes, it will. When the tally wins the bomber vote, will it be on sale? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Because, um, if, is it winning, by the way, then? It is. It is uh, I think it's winning by like, by, like 2 or 3%. It is Somewhere between they're both 2 and sexy. 4%. They're both sexy, sexy ships. Oh, yeah. I don't even want Actually, the Gladiator, I, but I, I voted for it. I, I, I voted for the Gladiator because I, I don't want the Gladiator either, but oh, man, the Gladiator, oh, that thing is... The best thing about the gladiator is getting Between in it. It's like getting in a Jaeger. A... Between the two of them, from a bomber standpoint, I do feel that the retaliator is much better equipped for the role. Yes. Well, I think it depends on which type of role you're going for. Mm. I mean, that's that's kind of in of itself the, the, the question. Like the retaliator definitely works as like a, a longer range bomber. Yeah, um, the retaliator or, is you more know, of a bomber. But if you need something. Sorry. Yeah, it's it's like a dedicated bomb bomber, like a B seventeen, if you will. Um, no, the retaliator is actually more of a um, uh, what's the word um, multi role kind of thing. It can do many different things because of how big and modular it is. Well, that's yeah. too, yeah, yeah. And the pilot is relatively useless. Well, the pilot is completely useless as a gunner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, well, uh, I don't know if that's intended use or not. I. But at the moment, you need, if you're going to take a retaliator out, God knows why you take a tally out right now, it's broken as smeg. But you can, you need to coordinate with your gunners and they need to tell you where to go, what to hang. It's, it's, if you can get that going, I can see that being a hell of an amazing ship. Whereas the Gladiator is much shorter range, much more designed to be able to get in, defend itself, and get mm -hmm. out. Yeah, tally is more well, guess... of a, we're going to fly all the way over there bomb the crap out of them, hope we don't get hit, and then come all the way back. Gladiator is more mm. like, oh, we're already here, go out there, bomb the crap out of them, uh, kill some fighters, and then come back. So Yeah. I guess One the way thing to keep in mind with it. the retaliator Damn it. is... <laughs> go on, I'm sorry. Uh, you do need a much more skilled pilot for a retaliator who is able to make sure that the turrets are facing the enemy. Uh, yes, that does apply with the Gladiator as well, but you only have to keep in mind where one turret is. With the Retaliator, you have to keep in mind where five turrets are. Yeah. Isn't it more than five? I thought that was... Three. Have you guys There's ever played... There's seven crew slots available, five turrets, one energy operator, and one pilot. Have you guys ever played uh, the game Guns of Icarus? Yes! Uh, that's... Oh, playing the pilot in that game is what it feels like to pilot a Connie or a uh, retaliator. <laughs> at least when you're on Guns of Icarus, though, you can, you've got, it's sensible, because you're at the back and you can see where all your gunners are True. as well, True. and you can be all like, oh, he needs to be there. Whereas in your when you're in the retaliator, you're right at the front and everyone's behind you. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's where they were talking about, and, and this was brought up with the, uh, someone did a revamp of the sensors, or the, the sensor globe. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And when they were discussing that, um, and I know they brought it up. I think it was on uh, either Ten for the Chairman or, or or something else later on, where they were saying, "Hey, you know, with that idea, like we are looking at it, and there's lots of things they want to incorporate." So I'm almost wondering if they're going to incorporate something like, um, well, Shiver, you would know this one, like kind of like the Arma approach, uh, where they display like an arc of where your gunners are actually able to fire for the pilot. Um, that way the, the, mm. the pilot has a much better understanding of where everyone kind of is. But how are you going to translate that into a 3D plane as well? Cones. That's up for the people to actually design. Anyway, we need to move on because more questions Cones. are coming in. And greetings to Zane. It's good to see Zane, hey, Zane. in chat. Hey, um, Zane. You feeling better after Evo eating all those streams. Evo Streams, question, when do you think we will see underwater gameplay and ships going underwater? Ooh. I don't know. I would like to start with answering this question. Yep. Okay. 
What did he say? So, one thing to keep in mind with ships going underwater, ships are designed to operate at a atmospheric pressure between zero and one. Going underwater <laughs> results in Future atmospheric honor. pressures of greater than one. <laughs> Just take a suppository. I remember <laughs> saying this a few months I'm ago, so and everyone had a go at me you. saying I was wrong. And I was like, okay, I'm wrong. Whoa, whoa. If I was there and it was the one that I was on, I was like, no. Or I'm not are sure. You I can't remember. I can't because remember. I remember quite a while ago. Yeah, I remember when, when someone was That's talking it. about it. I thought it was to answer Evo's actual question, I have no idea when this is going to come out. But I do not expect it will be anytime soon because first we need a planet that actually has water on it. That's yeah, that's true. that's where I think that we're not going to see it till at least procedural planets. I mean, we gotta we gotta actually have the planets with water on it. <laughs> it's going to be well beyond that, like, like for proper gameplay, not just have a swim. Quite a while. Oh well, imagine. yeah. Well, actually, maybe maybe not because I mean, if you think about it, all they really have to do is is take the same sort of system that they're using for the the atmosphere, and just change the level of it. Yeah, I was going to so say. So like, you know, atmosphere, drop it lower. This is sea level and everything under it. Change the change the dynamics again. Mm -hmm. More you know, resistance, go slower, yeah. accelerations mm -hmm. less. And if you remember, originally they all the engine thought everything was underwater anyway. Yeah. Exactly. That was I thought really that anyway. When you reach the zero point on the uh, Z-axis, above that, you were in space. I'm sorry, run the by me, run the by me again, uh, Otto? The engine only thought you were underwater when you had gone below the zero. Oh, oh. that's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I think there was something else to it too, wasn't there? Like, um, like the, the for a bit they just ended up basically saying, "Yeah, everyone's in water until we get this worked out." <laughs> uh, question: Where was it? Where did it go? It was from Jim. Why is the tally broken right now? I'm too focused on watching episodes of Postcards from the Event Horizon to tell. Um, <laughs> good man good man it's been a while since I've tried using it but every single time I've taken that damn thing out if someone so much as sneezes on my ship the only thing that survives are the lifts lifts well, in the tally wasn't, indestructible wasn't there also a huge problem with the torpedo bay I've never managed I've seen people say they've got it to work never seen it happen I, I've uh, seen the videos of it working but like each time it like goes up and then, like, hits an imaginary wall and blows up everything. Uh, people, I've seen people constantly getting chucked out of that ship if they aren't sat in a turret more so than anything yeah. else. But it's still, I love the Retaliator. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it, it's yeah. got a... <laughs> That's why I always insist on trying to use it. It's broken, <laughs> but I don't care! <laughs> it reminds me of a, a snake. It's got a very snake-like shape to it. Like, oh, if, if you look at... Of the well, I was going to say, if you look at the uh, the the voting pictures right now between the uh, retaliator and the um, uh, the gladiator, it, it just the shape, like you know, the the retaliator is very, you know, it's got the wings in the back and then it goes very straight, um, and uh, and then it just like widens out and then goes to a point. It's got just like a very snake head like shape to the rest of the ship. That's true. I, I, it reminded me quite a lot of um, the American stealth bombers. Just the general angles and things like that. It, it seemed like it took sort a few of, yeah. cues from there. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure uh, we've got enough time for one, maybe two more questions. Anyone? Ooh. Base chat? INN chat? Anyone chat? Right. Just someone chat? Well, one of the things I was going to say is that uh, like with the retaliator and the uh, Gladius, since we have a little bit of time before a question comes in, um, is that with the with the Retaliator, I always kind of viewed it as like um, like the broadsword out of the Wing Commander games, versus the the Gladiator being more of like the saber, where you have something that's like a dedicated, you know, huge huge bomber um, like the Retaliator, and yeah, it does have a lot of different ports where you can swap things in and out and all that stuff, but it, it's a huge bomber. It carries huge torpedoes, and you know, it, it sinks things. Uh, much like the submarine that someone was mentioning also there, but you know, with with all these turrets versus your your uh, gladiator, which is it's much lighter. It's you know goes in with. 
And we lost Carl. So yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think just thank throws. God for oh, that. Oh, he's back. Shit. Sorry. Well, uh, there was one quick question that was asked in chat by our holiday 17. My systems are still running. I'm no longer at a temperature that requires my fans to run. Uh, are you like passively cooled? Yes. Well, now that I've spoken, unfortunately, my systems are back, requiring my fans to run. <laughs> hey, um, just actually, that's. Uh, I'd like to get onto this question because this is a very good question. That definitely. We, I don't know why we didn't think of it earlier. Hey, yep. 07, what do you think of SciTech being bought by Logitech, and what does it mean for us? Oof. Depends on whether or not we actually think that the deal's going on with SciTech. Mm -hmm. Which we haven't heard anything yeah. From the whole joystick thing to begin with. I mean, for all we know, it might be kind of. Uh, um, we we don't know. They may uh, well have put it on hold. Yeah. Oh yeah, especially with the, of the pending deal with Logitech. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that Logitech leaves SciTech with some of its own autonomy to actually be able to continue this deal. But if they actually broker the deal with Madcats rather than SciTech then we're going to have a problem. SciTech uh, was specifically mentioned. That, yeah. SciTech was specifically mentioned as the people that are yeah. going to produce it. But uh, that Logitech they, are acquiring. With them. Okay. Madcats, Madcats have sold it to Logitech. Right. Um, but I think one of the best bits about the fact that Logitech have bought SciTech is they won't really need to change their name much to get half Logitech in there, because SciTech. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, also, uh, in, in, in seriousness, Logitech did the last force feedback joystick for the PC on the market that I've ever seen. It was hunkered shit and broke, but it they did try. And was to it? be fair, I think... Mm. I think doing a, uh, which, which a, a joystick that? for... G940 or something like that? I it was a whole HOTA system you got pedals. Sorry. Jesus, no, you're fine. sorry. I'm, I'm trying to interject myself anyway. So um, I, I think doing a, a joystick for Star System right now might not be the best idea anyway because the controls aren't locked down yet um, and features for ships aren't locked down yet. So I feel like if we came out with new peripherals that are based around the game and then... A couple months down the road, there's new features on the ship that require buttons that you don't have. Then I think it'd kind of be a waste of time. You can never have too many buttons. You up for yourself. What? <laughs> I said I'm glad you stood up for yourself, Chitters. It's about time. Listen to that crippling laugh. Well, you don't have like legs. I have legs. Uh. I'm about to sell them though. <laughs> they just don't function. <laughs> I don't think he's going to sell it to you, Otto. Right, before <laughs> someone gets the boot and the shoe is on the other foot. I'm not wearing shoes. <laughs> Neither am I. I, have I don't no get feet. it. See, I'm wearing a nice button-up shirt, but I'm wearing pajama pants. <laughs> That's all right. David usually <laughs> comes on and he's wearing a lovely <laughs> shirt, bow tie, and shorts. Boxers. They look like Clark. boxers. Uh, one last quick question from next. Dog welder. Yeah. Um, dog welder? Silence? I want to see, see a dog welder battery man crossover comic. But that's that's <laughs> all I got. So I don't even know what that is. Well, he's not as good as battery man. Oh, battery well, man is our savior. Comic character. He welds a blowtorch and dead puppies. Okay. Right. Shall we uh, say goodbye for the week? And I again apologize to the threes of people watching this and listening that this was delayed by a day. The if you, if I I'll have I I don't know if you want this to go on YouTube or what, but if you do, I uh, will put it on the YouTube. <laughs> Meantime, where can we find the illustrious, the esteemed? Auto DJ. I can be found broadcasting 24 7 on The Base Radio. You can find us on the spectrum at thebase.sc for all of your radio listening needs. 
Nitro Type Hat. Yeah. Inventor of the... And jitters. Type Hat. Jitters, man. Like, where could they find you? No, I'm jitters. No, no I'm, jitters. I'm rhubarb. Right. Watermelon. 4K um, genitals. Turn left. <laughs> uh, we have way too much. Anyway, um, I am on postcards from the Event Horizon on Wednesdays at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, 11 or uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. UTC, uh, with Shiver and Silence, and uh, and then on Saturdays I do the Spartan Hour uh, on Saturday mornings at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. UTC, and I, I play. What, what time does that end? Uh, that that ends after about 90 minutes to two hours, depending on how I feel that day. That, that I thought you said it was the Spartan Hour. It is. I know what I said. And why is it last? Nitro has refused to let me provide him with a new atomic clock to measure time with. I, I wouldn't that be able does to explain it. things. I, I can't tell time anyway. So. And like I understand that that postcard show that is not have a rerun on a Sunday. Yes, I believe that uh, this week it'll still be at its normal time of seven p.m. Eastern. 11 p.m. UTC, but next week it will be moving to before the Star Citizen, Star Citizen Base Roundtable. Uh, so three hours before, that would be 2 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern and 1800 UTC. UTC. Yeah, 16, or 16 o'clock. 6 o'clock <laughs> UTC. Nice. So. Carl Nimoy, silence. Oh God! I thought uh, you were going to do the trouser trick. Then sorry. No, no, I, that would have been pretty good. But no, I am not prepped for the trouser trick. Because um, seven, eight, nine. Well, better. as was as was pointed out, uh, I am also on postcards from the Event Horizon, most notably as Garl Nimoy. Hence the uh, joke down about other, there ish. Other corner. Is it, is it the other. There you go. It's the other. There you go. Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it so turn screwed left. me up. Exactly, turn left. Um, and I've totally been accidentally shirking by, unfortunately, because I've been busy, uh, my INN stuff, but I eventually do plan on actually getting back on top of that, uh, no pun, my sex tape, uh, for the MVP interviews. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I am at the moment. W what about you, Shiver? Uh, what exactly do you get up to these days? He gets up to um, about everything, I think. He does get up. <laughs> uh, to answer Jim's post, Jim the Jim the postcard, Jim, Jim the, the postcard. instant manager. Yeah, the rerun is permanently moving to before the Star Citizen Roundtable. The live show it will still be midnight. Uh, I don't know if that would be midnight Wednesday or midnight Thursday. Let's say twenty three fifty nine Wednesday. All that, all that. <laughs> um, and yeah, I do. I I don't know if I, I say this every week, but no one ever appears. Cosmic Cataclysm. If you're into alternative or and extreme metal, that's the show for you. That's seven p.m. BST, sixteen hundred, uh, eighteen hundred UTC Wednesday. Uh, in addition to that, we have the regular stuff coming out from INN. <laughs> Fiction on Wednesday, uh, transcript Thursday. I don't know. I, it's it, this week. There's a law post, or is that last week? And a bug smashers, <sighs> and then Thursday is around the verse transcript, and Friday reverse verse transcript. Saturday we will be back here normal time with a normal people, <laughs> well, and there is. We're normal Maybe. people. What's wrong with If you? he's alive. I thought he was dead. Who knows? Wait, Eris is coming back? Hopefully. It depends. We don't know if he's dead, Aww. alive. I'm kind of hoping he's still alive. You know, what with his lasagna escapades and everything. Yeah, I or hope he's being eaten by that cow. Liquid coolant. So... <laughs> <laughs> There was this time 
We were starting to the end of postcards from the event horizon, right? And all I had to do was say, oh, thank you all for coming. By the way, next week at this time, this is going to happen. And no, 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 they couldn't help themselves. No, 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 no. I, 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 the ho most horrible noises, some of the most foul words that you can possibly hear just constantly in my ear, like, go on, fuck it up, shift, fuck it up, shift, fuck it up, shift, go on, fuck it up, fuck it up. And I'm just like, yes, this is great. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Fuck it up, shift, fuck it up, shift, fuck it up, shift. And that's in addition to the normal voices in my head that say, fuck it up, shift. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm sorry it was delayed for a week. We'll see you in six days' time. Same place, same channel. Delayed for a week? I'm not time zone silence. <laughs>《That I haven't got 24, you know, after 20, gone. So, 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 we'll see you in the verse. There, see you in the verse. Basically, where Nitro says we were out for 20 minutes. Reverse.